Thank you for joining us at the GitLab Cultural Open House. And I have the pleasure today of women's leadership panel. My name is Tracy Robinson Williams, and I'm a senior product leader here at GitLab. With us today, we have an esteemed panel I'm very excited to introduce. Um, we have uh, Christy Lenel, who is the Vice President of User Experience. We have Darbra Satcher, who is our Senior Manager of Engineering. Brittany Rohde, who is Senior Manager of Total Rewards. And Erica Flowers, who is the Manager of Digital Production. Um, I'm calling, I'm talking to you from our Washington, D.C. Uh, remote office, which is, of course, my home. Um, but I'd also like to have each of these ladies talk to you a little bit about how long they've been here and um, where they're based as well, and a little bit of an introduction. Can you start us off, Kristen? Yeah, hi. Uh, so I'm located in San Antonio, Texas, and I've been with GitLab for about a year and a half, and it's been a very exciting year and a half. I've grown the UX department from 12 people to over 60 in the last you know, 12 plus months. So it's been an exciting journey. And Darva. Hello, I'm Darva Satcher. I am a native of Oakland, California, but I presently reside in Atlanta, Georgia. I started at GitLab June of 2019, and I started as an engineering manager here for the Create Knowledge and Create Editor teams. And right now I'm in transitioning into a senior manager for development role. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Brittany. Hi, everyone. I'm Brittany Rohde. Uh, I've been at GitLab for just over four years. So we were a very different company when I first joined. Uh, I think there was about 50 to 60 people at the time. Uh, so being able to see this company grow and expand to up to 1,300 has been really exciting and challenging. Uh, I've been part of Total Rewards since the function was created at the company and so enjoying also scaling that organization as well. Oh, and I'm located in DC as well. <laughs> okay. All right, and Erica. Yes, I am Erica Flowers. I uh, manage the digital production team. So that's all things audio, video, visual, um, and all that fun stuff. And I have been at GitLab for just under three years now. And uh, we're building out a great team here. Well, thank you very much for uh, those introductions. And let's get started with our questions. So. I want to pose the first one to Brittany and to Darva. Can you tell us about the opportunities around mentorship that are available here at GitLab? Informally for myself, I actually reached out and asked if a handful of people would be willing to mentor me. So when I started to move into a leadership role for Cinda management and moving into senior management, it's, uh, you know, I wanted to be able to talk with a peer who was at a similar level to me that I, you know, I'm aspiring to be at. And so having someone within the people group to come to, kind of just run different managerial situations past and talk through different uh, ways to respond, ways to react and, and how to improve myself as a manager since that was a new skill that I was building. And then also asking one of our executives to be sort of an executive sponsor and mentor for me to understand different parts of the organization than just the people group, which is where I've historically spent my career. So having sort of that broad based understanding and knowledge, being able to think about situations in different ways has been really helpful for me to be able to grow and develop. You know, and I encourage team members at GitLab to do the same. Uh, I was actually inspired to do this through our CEO shadow program, uh, where I you know, heard people talking about mentorship, got to see a lot of different parts of the organization. And so then I just raised my hand and asked, um, you know, the, my mentors were, you know, very happy to uh, speak with me on a weekly or biweekly basis. And it's been a wonderful experience since then. All right. And I think I'll follow up on that. Brittany, you are awesome. I didn't realize you just became a man. Go, oh, Brittany. Um, so I participated in three formal mentoring programs here at GitLab. So I've had a different role in each program. The first one was a program we did with Plato HQ, uh, and it was setting up engineering managers with outside senior management. So these are mentors outside of GitLab. It's been a really great experience. Um, I can go outside of the company and get a different perspective on how to handle different issues. I'm able to go to my mentor and explain to him, these are my weaknesses. Can you help me? You now be a cheerleader, help me move on to the next level. And through the process, I have been able to go through the process of promotion 
And I think that my mentor has really been helpful in that respect for me. Um, I've also participated in developing a mentoring program uh, with the MIT Minorities in Tech organization. That program is a little bit more formal. Um, we have 20 mentees that are in the Minorities in Tech program that are paired with leaders in GitLab. They work together for a period of three months and they get personal one-on-one -on -one development, but also work on a project that's impactful to GitLab. Uh, I think this has been wildly successful because you're growing team members and you're growing the product and you're making better process. So really excited about that. The third program I was involved with is the engineering internship program. So that's when GitLab reaches out to university students outside of the company and we mentor them and we teach them skills about career, uh, Agile development, GitLab working in a remote environment. And this was a really successful program. We had four participants and 50% of them were women. And I will say 42% of the MIT mentees were women. So those are three areas that GitLab's been really engaged in. And the final area I was not a participant of, but that was the Women in Sales Mentorship Program. And that program is when you have an individual mentor with someone in leadership, and then they have monthly coaching panels where they discuss various topics and in, in, in topics related to women. So transitioning in your career, work-life balance, things like that. So I'll end it by saying that GitLab is truly invested in mentoring underrepresented team members um, and just women in general. Thank, thank you for sharing that. Those are some fascinating experiences that um, you, you've had, Brittany and, and Darva. Um, Darva, can you tell us a little bit about um, how GitLab is demonstrating a commitment to supporting gender diversity? Do you have any okay. thoughts on that? Yeah, this one is interesting because I know this is the women's panel, but we truly do support all diversity, gender and non-gender, right? Uh, so I'm going to speak to the, the women, gender uh, in particular. The first thing that I learned here was I had to change my vocabulary. I'm notorious for saying guys. Um, I grew up in that generation, I don't know what to say. Uh, so at GitLab, we have a list of misused words and words that you know you should avoid. And um, I really appreciate the fact that I'm learning and growing and just the way I speak. And, and I feel that's very supportive for women. Um, another thing that was mentioned in the previous session was the women's Slack channel. This is a great safe space for us. We talk about um, the latest articles that are being published related to women in industry or challenges we have to COVID. Uh, and also if we have questions and we just need advice. In a traditional company where you're walking into the office, you're usually not gonna have a lot of, well, in my position in engineering, there are not a lot of women peers. But at GitLab, I feel like there are tons of women. They're from all over the world in every you know, department. You have marketing, sales, engineering. So I feel like I'm very supported just by going to that channel. Um, and the, the other thing that I want to mention is in the previous session, they, there's a women's TMRG that's a team member resource group, which is also a group dedicated to supporting and growing and developing women at GitLab. And the final thing that I love about GitLab is uh, the parental leave policy. I'm a mom. Uh, if you are having, I think, your first child, you get the first 16 weeks 100% paid. Okay, that's new for me. I, I know in other countries, maybe they have it a little better, but that is fantastic. Uh, and, and also they focus on pay equity which is also very near and dear to my heart. So I think GitLab does an excellent job supporting women. Subsequent children as well. So first child oh, and then any other ones that you have as well. All right, um, right, and right. the other thing that you know I think is important about our parental leave policy is that it's not just for women, but it's also for, it's our parental leave policy for both genders, as well as with any type of event that led to a child coming into your life. Which is amazing because when I had children, that wasn't even a thought. So I'm excited to work for a company that that, that supports this. Um, thanks for bringing those things up. Um, Christy, can we start with you this time? Can you tell us how the experience um, here at GitLab has been different than your experience at other companies? And then maybe Brittany, um, and if there's time, Erica, jump, jump into. 
Um, so I'll say I've worked in tech for 20 years, so a very, very long time. Um, and I've been really pleased to have a good experience overall, but GitLab is really an exceptional experience. Um, it's a place where I really feel like my voice is heard. Um, I think the fact that we work so asynchronously is a big part of that. Um, and then also the fact that uh, we're virtual, I think, in a lot of ways adds to that. One of the things that stands out to me is that at every meeting at GitLab, we have an agenda, which is nice just because meetings are much more pleasant when you have an agenda. But in addition to that, it's a real level, uh, leveler. Um, it's a really democratized way of making sure that everyone's voice is heard because we update the agenda in real time. So as we're having a conversation, if you have something to add, you put your name in the agenda, you put a high level view of what it is you wanna add and then you're next in line and you get to speak and people make sure that you really do get to have your voice heard, uh, which is incredibly empowering. And it makes sure that even folks who um, have a tendency not to feel as confident speaking up, will speak up. Um, I also will say that I've had uh, allies at GitLab where, you know, and look, it happens inadvertently where you go to speak and you go, ah, and it's something that you are an expert on and someone speaks over you. And I've had allies stop people and say, wait a minute, Christy's the expert on this. You need to let her speak, uh, which I think is a really um, unique experience that I've really appreciated. Thanks, Christy. Brittany? Yeah, and I think the, the piece that's interesting for me is out of all of those meetings or out of anything that we do, the radical transparency of posting that in the handbook so that other companies can also have learnings or be able to review how GitLab works so that if you were to apply to GitLab or if you were to perhaps transition to a different role at the company, you have the ability to see not only what the, you know, pro like policies look like, but how they're actually processed step by step within the handbook. Uh, for myself, moving from a more traditional human resources environment, which transparency does not typically go hand in hand with a lot of you know people or human resources functions in other companies. And so it's been really refreshing for me to see how changing that can be to the way that we work, getting different insights, diversity of thought, and being able to take all of that into consideration before we implement anything new is really helpful as part of any change management process that at other companies might not happen in the same way. So it's interesting to see kind of that difference. Uh, the other thing is just being able to work remotely. And, you know, it's exciting seeing this become more and more common. I'm super passionate about remote work because I wouldn't be able to have a career if I wasn't working remotely. My significant other, we move, well, I've moved four times in four years, so uh, to different states. And so, you know, that creates a bit of a, a gap in your resume if you're popping from co-located jobs every single time. And so being able to have that continuity in a professional career and balance kids and dogs and you know everything else that kind of goes on in your life is, is wonderful and, and very different from other companies I've worked at. Erica, how does this um, play into collaboration in your opinion? Um, I think it's, it's great to uh, have folks engaged, especially when you're in all remote environments, sometimes people are in a bubble and mm -hmm. no one really knows what's happening in anyone else's world and there's this feeling of isolation. But um, with GitLab and the way we do things, even though we're all remote, you know, I mean, I've, I've fostered more relationships in, in, in an all remote job than I have in some, you know, traditional roles because of all the collaborative work that we do together um, as an organization and cross functional uh, over like different departments or organizations. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's, you know, a huge benefit of the way that we do uh, remote work at, at GitLab. Well, you, you mentioned the interesting situation we're all in right now. And, you know, so balancing your your job and personal life has become very difficult during COVID-19, right? Was this something that you anticipated or something that you expected as, you know, as part of acclimating to the situation we're in now? Um, you know, can you tell us how remote has impacted your ability to, to, to manage and balance your, your life and your job right now. Brittany, can you, can you start us off with that? 
I think when when the pandemic, you know, for 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 myself, it started in you know kind of mid March when uh, things started to become a little bit different, and my daughter was home with me a hundred percent of the time because her school was completely shut down. Uh, she's two, so she is mm. right at the rational reasoning step of being able to understand why we have to do different things at a certain time. Uh, she's also very entertaining, so it makes up for all of the lack of <laughs> reasoning. Uh, but it, it can be difficult to balance. I ha I have to you know do this work and meet these, you know, results that I had promised to my team and to my company that I would do in this new forum. And so finding a new schedule and also not reverting back to a more traditional setting of, I am now a mother who's expected to keep my house, my children and my job all running at, you know, the, the top of my game. <laughs> That's not, it's not an expectation that I wanted to set for myself. My partner and I, you know, set up certain ways in which we could mitigate some of that. But that was a bit of a fear in the beginning is we have women have come so far and having everything shut down, not having the help that you typically would have with schools being open, your partner being able to have a flexible schedule, maybe family members that you see on a regular basis that can help you uh, really did scare me at first. Uh, you know, I think things have started to level out and we've come into a new routine or a new normal, uh, but also keeping up with productivity and how am I going to keep up with productivity? I was really fortunate that uh, the CEO shadow program that I had referenced earlier ended just about a month before uh, the pandemic hit. And so I had learned a lot about productivity and efficiency and sort of reinvigorating a lot of those learnings that we talk about at an executive level. And I was able to bring that into how I'm going to be productive in this new normal with a two year old having her in a meeting. And also, you know, the acceptance from my team when I'd randomly be speaking and she'd start screaming behind me and I just mute and everyone would laugh and we'd move on to the next thing. It wasn't a, a topic of conversation. So I think all of those factors combined me setting new expectations, acceptance from you know the company and from your peers on what you can and can't do, and being really communicative and collaborative and in, in how we make that happen going forward, help to make it a bit of a better situation. Okay, that that sounds great, um, Erica. Do you have any advice that you might be able to offer in this type of situation? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that folks can do in this situation is to give themselves some grace, you know, and make sure that you are, you know, taking time out for your friends, for your family and for yourself and self care. Um, there's a lot of people out there who are like, oh, this COVID-19 time has been so great for me because I've been able to slow down and, you know, have my Zen moments and all that, which is great for those people. But for some people like myself um, in digital production, everything has pivoted straight to video, right? So it has caused this major ramp up. And I think our events team can also feel that pain as well in terms of having to change the way they do things. So, you know, don't feel that pressure to, you know, feel like this is just this amazing, you know, zenny moment um, because for everyone it's a pandemic, right? So it's stressful, but you know, that whole time of self care and all those things, you have to, create that time for yourself and create hard boundaries and, you know, for work and all other parts of your life to make sure that you are taking care of yourself so that you can take care of your family and be there for your friends and your family and everyone else. So I think um, don't feel the pressure to feel what everyone else is feeling and do what everyone else is doing, you know, reflect on what your needs are and your family's needs are and, and go towards that. That's excellent advice, Erica. Thank you for sharing that. Um, as, as women in leadership, you, you face some unique challenges. Can you provide some advice on, to other women about what to do as they pursue leadership positions in their own careers? Christy, can you, can you start us out? Um, so I'll start by saying imposter syndrome is a real thing. Um, and I'll be vulnerable and admit that I have imposter syndrome. Um, men and women experience it depending on who they are, but as women, we're more inclined <laughs> to experience it. So some of my advice would be around, don't assume that you're less qualified than your peers, uh, because chances are you're not, uh, you have a lot of really amazing skills to offer. Um, and then also don't assume 
that when you are looking at an open role, that every qualification that's listed on that role is an absolute requirement. Because I can tell you as someone who has hired many, many, many people in my career, that's not the case. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about our ideal candidate and we're aware that you know, what ultimately ends up being our best candidate may not hit 100% of those qualifications. And they're still awesome. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So don't hold yourself back. Um, another piece of advice I have is to help other women along the way. Um, now, we always want the best person in a position. I'm not going to hire someone because they are a woman. Um, you know, we we always want to make sure that we're hiring fairly and that we're hiring the best person. Uh, that being said, as women in leadership, we have an opportunity to give other women a hand up and to make sure that biases that might have come into the process, we can make sure that those stay out and that we are offering women the same opportunities that men get. Um, and then lastly, I'll just say, speak up. Your voice is important. It deserves to be heard just as much as anyone else's. Uh, a lot of that comes down to just confidence that, yeah, you have something valuable to add. So go ahead and add it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry after the fact about whether what you said was right or perfect. Just get in there, get your voice heard. It's important. And it encourages other women to do the same thing when they see you do that. Thank you for being vulnerable with that, Christy, because I think that a lot of us have that same sort of feeling. Um, Erica, your thoughts? Um, I, you know, would echo uh, some of the points that Christy has made. I think, you know, it can be difficult for folks who have a hard time reconciling that you are an authority um, or an expert uh, in a certain area or subject, um, especially when you're in a field that's traditionally male heavy. I'm working in tech and I'm also working in production, which is also very male heavy. So um, then you also have to add to that, there's all these cool apps and ways that people can create their own videos and graphics and all of these things. So everyone thinks that they are a pro at production now, right? Which is great, <laughs> but you know, you have to exert, you know, your authority and your expertise um, and make sure that, you know, while you don't feel the burden of having to know everything, make sure that you highlight your expertise. And, you know, don't also, because I think sometimes this happens and I've had, you know, I've, I've experienced this where, you know, folks will tell me, particularly males, that I don't need to exert myself or voice my experience or expertise in the field. But there's no reason to stay mum about what you know. I mean, other folks are free to, you know, talk about how great they are at everything and what they've done. So you should feel free to, to do that yourself. Um, just, you know, don't be egotistical about it. Be, do it in a non-egotistical manner. It illustrates also your openness to collaboration. There, you, you always wanna be open to collaborate, but you also need to make it known that, you know, hey, I got this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then also I would say, you know, sometimes it's just as simple as letting your work speak for itself. In due time, you know, folks kind of figure out like, hey, maybe, Maybe she does know what she's talking about, right? And so, um, you know, just let your work speak for itself, but also speak up and don't hesitate to make suggestions and voice your opinion. Um, it is difficult not to second guess yourself. And, you know, I've done that sometimes. And then it's like someone else say the same thing that I, I had already thought like two weeks ago or wanted to say, but didn't say it because I was like, yeah, I don't know. What to, you know, so, you know, speak up um, and don't second guess yourself because. No one, you know, no one's perfect. No one's going to get everything right. So don't beat yourself up. Choice words. Thank you. Um, and Darva, can you wrap that question up for us, please? Yes, very quickly. Um, so <laughs> there was a time that I would say to myself, there are not many people who look like me in this room, in this organization, in this career. Um, and what I want to say is don't worry about it. Uh, someone has to be the first woman. Someone has to show the next generation of leaders what they can become. And all of the ma my male peers that I've had, when it get, comes right down to it, we're all focused on credit, collaboration, results, efficiency, diversity, inclusion, belonging, iteration, and transparency. We connect on those levels. Point, I forget that I'm the only one in the room. So more similarities than differences. 
And I think that's one of the most awesome things about GitLab is the inclusivity to bring that back about everyone belongs here and we all have our part to play because we can all contribute. So thank you all. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We could talk forever with this stellar group of women that I admire so much. So thank you all for participating um, in this panel and for sharing your very vulnerable and candid moments with us. So thanks for joining and thank you ladies.